Welcome back. In the previous section, we have created smart contracts using Solidity. The ability to create smart contract is one of Ethereum's main selling point. It's supposed to eliminate the need for trust between parties. Once a smart contract has been deployed to the Ethereum blockchain, it can be interacted with in a decentralized way. It can be verified by all the participants in the Ethereum network. But now, I want us to take one step back and I want us to look at the big picture behind smart contracts. Basically, smart contract is nothing more than a basic computer program. It has variables, functions, classes, it can receive information from the user, it can process and return results, and this basic program runs on what is known as the Ethereum Virtual Machine or the EVM. And now let's take another moment to look at traditional application architecture. We have a client, we have a server, and we have a database. The client, or the user in our case, sends a request to the server. The server then receives that request, processes it, and presents it to the client. Sometimes this process might also involve some interaction with a database. It might pull some information out of that database, or it might store information on that database. But all the process that we have just described can also be achieved using the Ethereum virtual machine and smart contracts. Let's think on a very basic application, a very basic example. Our application will only present one variable. This variable will be a number. Let's say the exchange rate between the US dollar to the Canadian dollar. The user will press a button and a request will be sent to the server. The server will process this request and will look for the proper information for the exchange rate on the database. It will pull the information out of the database and it will give it to the user, to the client. And the back end of such an application can be easily replicated using smart contracts. We have already learned how to create smart contracts that can present this type of information. So why not to create an application that will cut the server completely? Why not create an application that will allow the user to directly interact with the Ethereum blockchain? In our case, the user will look for the required information for the exchange rate on a specific address in the blockchain. Well, this is actually the point of this section. We are going to use some basic web development tools in order to build a user interface that will allow the user to directly interact with the Ethereum virtual machine with the blockchain. So, let's just dive into it. The first thing that we need to do is to create our working environment. For the purpose of these tutorials, I have decided to use a blend of three components. First, we got Meteor. Meteor is a framework that will allow us to easily create JavaScript-based application. Now, some of you might be already familiar with Meteor, and you might have some concerns to use this framework in order to create a decentralized application. And actually, you might be somewhat right, because Meteor was originally designed to work with 
a centralized server and a database. And maybe you've also heard about other frameworks such as Truffles or Embark and you are wondering why we are not going to use them in this tutorial. Well, the thing is that Truffle and Embark are still quite new and they do have some issues that I don't really want to cover in these tutorials. They might fit to a more experienced decentralized application developer, especially to those who wish to take advantage of a more decentralized storage solution, such as IPFS or Swarm, if you ever heard of those services. But for the purpose of this tutorial, Meteor will be much more useful. Its code is much more robust. It is much more mature framework. It has a very, very extensive documentation, which will provide a great help for beginners. So I highly suggest that at least for now, stick to Meteor. And when you are feeling more comfortable with the tools that I will later on introduce you with, then you might also do the switch from Meteor to other framework such as Truffle or Embark. The second item is a Chrome plugin called MetaMask. It will provide us with an easy way to interact with the Ethereum blockchain without having to download and verify a complete copy of the blockchain. And it will make our life much, much simpler. And, and this for this stage of learning how to use decentralized application, how to build decentralized application. I can wholeheartedly recommend that you will use MetaMask. In the future, we might choose a more complex tool. We might choose to use one of the recommended clients, such as Geth or Parity. We will set RPC to that client. But for now, MetaMask will do the trick. It will greatly help us to learn the basics without having to spend hours or even day on updating our blockchain. Just make sure that you are using the testnet and not the mainnet. The third item on our list is the Web3 JavaScript library. It is supported by the Ethereum Foundation team and it is very well documented. You can either download a vanilla version of the Web3 JavaScript and then directly insert it into your project. Or, in our case, we will use the Meteor Package Manager in order to install the Web3 library. And we will do so in a minute. But firstly, we of course need to install our Meteor. So after we have downloaded and installed Meteor from their website, we are going to open our working directory we will open a command line and we will type meteor create the app, this is the name of the application, dash dash release 1.4.1.1. I strongly suggest that you will also use this release 1.4.1.1 because it will help us to stay on the same page and it will be very useful for the purpose of this tutorial. Now we need to wait for a few minutes. There we go, our application is ready. Let's go into that directory. CD the app. And now we can insert our JavaScript Web3 library just by typing Meteor add Ethereum Web 3. Again, we need to wait for a minute. There we go. And now we can launch our application just by typing Meteor. And unfortunately, once again, we need to wait for a few minutes for, for our application to initialize. There we go. Now you can see that our application is running on localhost 
3000. So just open your browser and go to localhost 3000. If everything works correctly, you should be greeted by this welcome screen. And indeed, everything seemed to work correctly. So now let's initialize our Web3 object. In order to do so, we are going to open our decentralized application directory in a text editor. I am using Sublime Text. And under Client, I'm going to create another folder called lib, short for library. Inside this folder, I'm going to create a JavaScript file, also called lib for library, lib.js. Inside this file, we are going to initialize our Web3 object. And we can look at the documentation on GitHub. And actually, I highly recommend that you will skim through it because it's a very good documentation. You will learn a lot by reading it. But right now, what we are looking for is how to initialize the Web3 object. So, over here, we already have a working example of that code. So what we need to do is just to copy this code and paste it. There we go. And now, if our MetaMask plugin works, we can press F12 and we can see over here at the bottom that MetaMask has injected Web3 object to our project. And that is exactly what we wanted to achieve. But there is one more thing. Before we can use our Web3 JavaScript object, we need to talk about callbacks. You see, the Web3 JavaScript library assume that we are using Ethereum with our own node, with our own copy of the blockchain. It assumes that whenever we want to interact with the blockchain, we already have a local copy sits on our machine. And therefore, it's supposed to have some sort of a synchronized communication between the JavaScript library and the blockchain itself. But because sometimes receiving the information from the blockchain might take us a slightly more time, it is really in the milliseconds on, but for the purpose of the code, the code itself will expect to get some information from the blockchain. And once this information will be delayed, it might break. So we are going to use the callback method. Most of the method defined in this Web3 JavaScript library has a callback method. Those callbacks method are described over here. And what we see is that for every function, every callback function, we can declare at the end of our line an anonymous function, a nameless function, that will always receive two arguments. The first argument is always the error, and the second argument is always the result. If during the execution of our desired method, an error code, this information will be delivered to our anonymous callback function using the first error argument. And if no error occurred, then the second argument, the result, will be available to us within our callback function. Now, we are going to build a very basic example. We are going to create an application that will only display a pop-up window. And within this pop-up window, we will see the current balance of a specific Ethereum account. We will do so by using the Web3 method called get balance right over here 
we can see that the only required parameter for this function is the address of this Ethereum account in hexadecimal string. We might also add some more parameters, such as the block number, and then we will receive the balance of that account in a specific point in time at a specific block. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we will just leave it empty to receive the current balance of that address. So now we will go back to our text editor. We will go to our main JavaScript file under client. Inside this file, we have a list of helpers. If you have never used Meteor before, don't be discouraged. We are not going to spend too much time talking about helpers or templates or um, events, etc. We only want to see this Web3 object in action, and that is it. So in order to achieve that, we are going to clear one of the already defined functions in our helper. We will clear this counter function, and instead, we will write our first code. We will start by writing web3.ether.getBalance. And now, the information that is required is a testnet address. So, I'm just going to copy my address from my MetaMask account, like so. and paste it over here as a string. There we go. And now we need to create our callback function. So we're just going to declare function. The first argument is error. The second argument is result. And we are going to make it do the following. I'm going to say, use the JavaScript method allowed in order to create a pop-up window. Inside this pop-up window, display the result. And let's end this statement. There we go. Now you can go back to our application. And let's refresh it. And now you can see we got this pop-up window from localhost 3000. This is the address of our application. And this represents the amount of Ether as way. Don't forget, way is the basic denomination of Ether. It represents the amount of Ether as ways that my account is currently hold. So that was it. In this video, I've showed you a very basic example of how to use this Web3 JavaScript object. But what is more important, we have created an environment that can be used as some sort of a laboratory or a playground. Feel free to look at other functions, other methods described in the Web3 JavaScript um, documentation and try to manipulate those method, try to implement those methods, try to think of the use cases for them. It will be a great exercise for you and you will learn much, much from it. Don't hesitate to play with this environment. Don't hesitate to play with those tools because this is really the way to learn.